Hello and welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we'll be looking at this eagle uploaded by Mr. Detrout13. First things first, we go to the developer notes, see if they have any recommendations. And all they say is uh, eagle, so that's more than fine. Um, once you're ready to download the model, click on this download all files here. You should get a folder similar to this with only one STL. So click and hold on the STL and drag it into your slicer of choice and give it a few seconds to load in. Once it's finished loading in, you should be greeted by this gigantic uh, eagle right here. Now, as you can see, it's both black and yellow, meaning that the model does not fit within the build plate. And more than likely, it will not fit on your build plate either, so we do have to scale it down. Now, in order to do that, you can click on the model and go to the second one down right here, scale. Make sure uniform scaling is on and change it to whatever percent you want it to be scaled down to. Now, at the very, very minimum, I recommend you scale no smaller than 15%. So type 15, enter. Now, please know that the smaller you go, the harder it is going to be to print the model with all its details. So feel free to go up from there. You can check uh, the size down here. If you look at the very bottom, it says that 15% it stands at roughly 86 millimeters. So if you want that size, go ahead and print with that size. If not, you can scale this up a little higher and make it a little taller. It will make it much easier to print and you'll see a lot more details. But for the purpose of this video, I'll stick at 15%. Next, we're going to select a layer height. To do that, click on this profile over here and click on whatever layer height you want. Now, I recommend you go with a finer layer height like 0 0.16 or 0 0.1 or 0 0.12. But if you want, uh, you can also do a 0 0.2 millimeter, although you may lose some quality or details. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go stick with 0 0.2 millimeters to have a fast and easy print. Now, if this pops up, just click on discard and I'll erase all previous settings you had for that profile. Next, we're going to go to supports. We're going to click on the supports tab, click on generate supports. And we're going to up this overhang angle all the way up to 60. Now, if you have a higher end printer, feel free to go all the way up to 70. This will make the supports a lot easier to remove. Now, 70, 70 uh, degree angle is usually unheard of, something you really don't want to do. But for this model, you should be more than fine. I said it will make it a lot easier to remove. But for me, I'm going to stick with a 60 degree angle. Next, we're going to go to support wall line count and set to one. And this is optional, but whenever I printed this support, I'm mean, sorry, this model, the supports were very difficult to remove. I'll be honest. I didn't break anything. I got everything off perfectly, but it did take me some time. So if you want to make it easier, we can change this support wall line count from one all the way down to zero. Now, if you don't have this option, you're going to have to put your mouse over the support tab, click on this gear icon and just look up uh, whatever support you do, or sorry, whatever setting you don't have. So let's say you don't have support wall line count. You can search it up and hit this little check mark there. And now it should pop up on your little uh, menu here. So we're going to set that to zero support density. We're going to lower it to 5%. So we don't want too much material on the inside of the support, meaning it'll be a little bit easier to remove. And finally, support Z distance, we're going to up it to 0 0.26. Like I said, that'll create a little uh, higher gap from the support to the model, making it, once again, easier to remove. Build plate adhesion, we can go take a look at the bottom of the model. And we see that the edges are kind of weird. It looks like they are lifted up slightly. But there's sufficient uh, area, direct area in contact with the build plate, so we don't need any build plate adhesion. And other than that, uh, it looks like we're set. So just hit on, uh, hit the slice button and then give it a few seconds to render. Once it's done rendering, you should be given a time estimate of roughly four hours and 30 minutes, as well as a estimated filament usage of 28 grams. Now always preview the print. So hit that preview button. And you can take a look around the model and you see there's quite a few different uh, weird things going on. Now don't be scared. I did print it off like this too. I said there's some areas that are uh, 
kind of funky. And we can only see this because we set the uh, wall line count to zero, meaning there's not an entire wall covering all these uh, or connecting these supports together. So it should be more than fine printing like this. So there's some like this pillar right here looks like it's disconnecting. So you may have some filament just dropping randomly. Like I said that shouldn't be too much of an issue. So once you're ready, save the file and send it over to your printer and you should be set to go. Here's the model before the supports are removed. Now, like I said before, supports are pretty difficult to remove, so take your time, use some pliers, and be careful. Here's the model once the supports are removed, and all I have to say is that this model is completely beautiful. There's so much detail, and everything looks perfect. There's no flaws, no uh, misprints, everything turned out pretty good. Now, you could do some light sanding if you wanted to, but it's not completely necessary. Now, although the supports were a complete hassle, I still may print this uh, model once more, just a little bit bigger. Should make the support removal a lot easier. And like I said, it's a very beautiful model. Definitely uh, attractive, especially for us Americans.